Yeah, definitely. That photo literally um, changed my life from the day that that went viral and was shared all over the world. My perspective on life and also my reach in life and just everything's changed since then. It's been a really um, inspirational year for me. So obviously last year after the killing of George Floyd, um, everyone saw it, I saw it and it touched me really deeply. I hadn't felt that strongly about something for a long time. So when I found out the protests were coming to London, I knew I had to get involved. Um, I was working at the earlier protests, so the Sunday one was the earliest one I could make and turned up with a few friends and on my way towards it, Miss Anne Harriman, um, the photographer, caught my, he saw my photo which caught his eye and, um, sorry, he saw my sign which caught his eye and asked for a photo and from there the photo just got shared virally by the likes of um, celebrities but all the way up to Martin Luther King III which was one of the most amazing moments of my life. I think a lot has happened in the sporting world in terms of Black Lives Matter. You see um, athletes all over the world and all sports using their platforms to speak up on the matters, which has been like really inspirational. And you can show that like their platform can be so powerful and it's been incredible to see people uniting through it. Um, but I think, and for example, on hockey, which is a sport that is predominantly white and not very diverse, you're seeing people make startups or projects, community projects to try and make the sport more accessible and more diverse. But obviously change like this take a while to happen. So people need to continue to do the work. But it's been really promising to see that people have got the right initiative, right ideas. And when we all come together, hopefully good things will be happening. My platform grew at a point where I had just come out of school um, post lockdown. And it was a lot of pressure for an 18 year old. Yeah. Um, the world was seeing me as an activist and I had to, I didn't have to step up, but I felt like I needed to. And I wanted to step up to that role of an activist. And continue my work all the way through a year later and I want to keep continuing my work as an activist as well as an athlete and a student and just a teenager um, so it's been a lot of pressure but I wouldn't have wanted anything else. I know that I was quite lucky in my hockey journey and that I was, I've grown up in a predominantly white area. I went to a pretty nice school that offered hockey and I happened to live near one of the best hockey clubs um, in the country and so I know that me personally not the same experience as a lot of black girls or black boys all over the country. So I've been trying to use my platform to support those that I know haven't been as fortunate as me. And I, when I was younger and I played lots of sports, I love looking up to black role models in tennis or athletics. I didn't have that in hockey. So my hope is that if I continue to make it through the system that I can maybe act as a role model for younger players coming up. In my decision-making a few years ago, when I chose to go to Duke, I didn't think about the consequences that might be there um, because of the color of my skin, but obviously, in the past year with the events having come to my attention, the world's attention, I was a little bit worried about it. And I've been warned by other people, friends, family members, that I needed to be careful out there. Um, and that was really saddening for me because I was warned simply because of the color of my skin. Um, and as I've been out there in America, I've learned more about the history of America and the history of slavery, racism, and how down South it is still, well, everywhere, it is still a problem. And um, in doing so, though, I have made some really incredible like connections and relationships with people in learning about um, the difficulties they've gone through through their life and like generations before them. And you can see that change is happening and the movement is so strong out there, but a lot of change does need to happen. And there's just things on a daily basis or a weekly basis that you can tell that you're living a slightly different life from white people who don't have necessarily the fears that us black people do. Duke's been a university that has been so supportive of Black Lives Matter. We wear Black Lives Matter shirts um, in our games and they've supported me and everything I've been doing more than I could have ever expected. But when you go out into the real world, um, that's when you really see it. And when you speak to people who have lived in America their whole life, that's when I hear and can realize the reality of the issue. Yeah, definitely. There are times where, um, for example, if I saw a cop, I naturally, was scared and that's what social media and the news have taught me and my white friends or white teammates didn't experience that and they knew that was a privilege for them or if we we're going on long drives they would drive because they knew there was less chance of them getting pulled over by me and it was those sort of things that were just constant reminders that life isn't the same for black and white people in America at all.